So uh, I was thinking that maybe we can discuss something that was left out when I was talking about chapter four because of time. Mm -hmm. And it was the section that introduces uh, PCA. Okay, and it was kind of, a, you know, if I was doing a critique on the book, for example, I found that a little bit uh, disconcerting, okay? Because he just goes you know, to the PCA without explaining anything about PCA. And, you know, that, that's a tall, for me, that's a tall assumption, okay? Maybe not in the, you know, but, because this is more like a, like an academic course, okay? Maybe there's some introduction first, you know, introduction to data science and all that, then you talk about PCA, and then you go, you know, to the advanced courses. But still, uh, you know, at, at least you should talk a little bit about it to make sure that your audience says, okay, okay, I, 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 if I didn't know PCA, at least I have a, an inkling about that. So let's see what happens. <laughs> how's, he, how's your newborn? Um, he's doing good. Okay. Uh, uh, what is it, a month or something? A couple of weeks? Sorry? <laughs> how weeks. old is he? Two weeks, weeks, right? Okay. Yeah. Are you getting any sleep? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We have been through that, you know? So, yeah. I'm I sure you know it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you know better. Yeah, especially the second one when, you know, it was already two years old. I said, okay, now we can get back to normal. Boom. <laughs> Here comes another two years. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> for rough four years. <laughs> okay. So, uh, congratulations, man. You know, Thank you. I hope you know you have a, a great, uh, a great experience as a parent. <laughs> okay, so let's get this going. Okay, so okay, in in you know when we were talking in the chapter four, chapter four really talks about the the, the time series features that you can extract and you can process uh, through different methods. Uh, you know, we uh, we talk about decomposition, the then we talk about uh, you know, the seasonal uh, features, the trend features, and, you know, more than you can uh, absorb, right? So this is the last section before the exercises on chapter four. And this is the data set that, you know, he took as an example, the Australian tourism data. And he extract from the package feasts, right? He extracted, all the features that the package provides for the trips, okay? Uh, depending on the region, the state, and the purpose, you know, because they are, you know, different time series depending on the subsetting that you're going to do. So there's a total, the package provides you a total of 48 features, right? But the, you know, when we get kind of a high dimensional data set from the features then, the question is, you know, how we're going to process it? Which are the features that matter most, right? You know, in, in our in our study. So he introduces the, you know, the kind of a pair plots in a, you know, in a in steroids <laughs> from the GG Ally uh, package. And you know, you can extract different information like correlations from different, you know, the different features. Uh, he segmented it by purpose, right? Okay, uh, that, this is the, the selection, right? By purpose, which is uh, holidays, uh, businesses. Um, I think the other one is um, their business, holiday, visiting, and others. Okay, and you can extract, you know, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, different insights from this plot. Then, and that was the, the surprise, right? Then he goes, and uses the same feature, but using PCA, right? And, you know, you have to kind of stop here and say, okay, okay, wait a minute, what, what's he talking about? You know, what is PCA, you know, why is he using that? So the reason is, okay, the reason is that because we have the tourism features, it's a high dimensional, you know, it has 48 features. Uh, you want to try to reduce, okay, that those dimensions so that you can make sense in a lower dimension a set of what the data can, can bring us, okay? And, you know, just for uh, the chat, uh, this is, uh, I was checking this this morning, you know, just to refresh, 
on the times, uh, the principal components analysis. And, you know, there's a lot of linear algebra, there's, you know, words that you usually don't, you know, get to know, you know, after, you know, you, you, you take a little deeper uh, inside, but there's some eigenvectors and, you know, all kinds of, 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 uh, of, of weird things. But this video, I think is one of the best that I have seen is from Julia uh, Silgi, okay, our, our studio uh, Tari models uh, uh, expert, and she has this. Uh, you know, for 2019, she was working. She was not really start our studio. She was working in um, Stack of, uh, Stack Overflow as a data analyst, and she has this video, very good video, okay, because it brings down, okay. You know the theory, okay? I'm going to bring down the principal component analysis to, you know, the the analyst the analyst level. What can you take from it? And she has a couple of a good examples. But in this one, uh, she gave us a nice definition of what the principal component analysis tries to do. And I'm going to just read it. It says principal components are the linear combination of features that have the maximum variance out of all linear combinations. So in other words, you are going to transform the features that are the numeric features that are in that data set, and we're going to recombine them in order so that the first components bring us the most variance. Why is, is that important? Because variance is the measurement that gives you the more you know, uh, prediction power. Okay, you know, if you have a feature that is very, that has little variance, for example, is a feature that usually doesn't contribute, okay, to your, uh, to your response, right, to your uh, pre, uh, uh, target a variable. Why? Because it has little variance, you know, it doesn't vary that much. So it's going to be impervious to what is happening in another, in, a, in another area. If you have maximum variance, then that maximum variance could be a good explanation, a good expl uh, uh, you know, ex ex explanatory variable for that target. And that's what the principal components really is about. It's trying to reduce those features in order that you get the most variant, the most predictive power in a couple of them, okay? And I went to show you because I had, I had to do, for example, in the exercise that he brings the author, um, one of the questions that I had was how much variance do the first principal components uh, give us, okay? Because in some instances, and it has happened in the real, in the real world, uh, you don't get that much variance from the first component analysis. You have to keep going, okay? Until you get the desired, uh, uh, you know, percentage of variance explained that you want to, you want to work, okay? And sometimes the principal component analysis won't be the best tool uh, for it. Okay, so you have to have those, uh, you know, th those rails, right, of, of thought to make sure that your analysis, the way that you are, are using the tool is sound and is convincing. Okay, so let me, okay, I think I copied it already. Let me do this. Okay, let me put it in the chat. Okay, uh, PCA uh, video. Okay, so we can have it in the, the chat log. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, let me see where I am. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see, okay. So um, with the two recent features uh, that we're talking, uh, what the author uh, does is that he, I'm um, sorry, uh, he, Deselects the labels, okay? Because principal components analysis just works on numeric, right? Uh, so he's going to get rid of those labels that state the region of the purpose, and he's going to apply the PR comp function, which is the PR, the principal component analysis function, you know, uh, from base R. But we have to scale it. So in other words, uh, re remember this data set, right? Okay. So we have. Uh, seasonal strength by year that probably goes from zero to one, but then we have seasonal peak year that goes from zero to three, okay? So the magnitudes are different. So the way that you, uh, you know, can uniform 
those mat matrices, magnitudes, because remember, this is like linear regression, right? This is linear algebra. Mo if the magnitudes are higher, the model is going to interpret that those are, you know, more, uh, more important. Okay, so you have to scale it all the features to the same, you know, the same, the same range. And then using the library room, you are going to augment uh, these uh, two recent features. So to give you more or less an, uh, you know, a view of what PC, PCS is, okay, I have it right here. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I can, if I can bring the, uh, if I can bring the mark down, okay. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Okay, so PCS, what, what, what is PCS, right? So as you can see, when you do the augment, right? The augment function for a two recent features, what it does is that it brings back uh, those labels, right? It brings back th those labels and then it brings all the you know features uh, with the transformation of the PCA. So it does a, a, a couple of nifty things. The good thing is that when you have that information, then you can plot it, okay? And usually what you can plot is a two-dimensional you know, representation of that pre-simple component analysis because we cannot extract more, usually more than, let's say three dimensions, okay? If you get a three-dimensional uh, picture, you can see it, but still, you know, it's a little bit fuzzy. So two dimensions is, you know, is, is, is good enough. So we get the PCS, right? The PCS function, uh, the, the principal component function, uh, we, you know, uh, create this uh, PCS. And then in the PCS, we can then plot it in a two-dimensional thing. And what it's giving us is something very interesting. As you can see, this, uh, let me go back to the, representation, okay, is, is the same is the same plot. What you can see is that uh, the principal component, the two principal components, fitted PC, PC1 and PC2, is giving us an insight that these dots, these green dots, okay, do we correspond to holiday? Uh, you know, are in a certain zone of their own. In other words, they are very different from the group, <laughs> okay? And as you can see, uh, holidays, remember that, you know, when we're talking about that, holidays has a very seasonal, you know, component. It has a trend also. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's telling you this graph for me, is telling you that holidays kind of, a, you know, a separate, you know, a separate animal, <laughs> okay, in that sense. So you should be careful when you, you know, uh, merge it with other, other purposes, okay? So one of the things that, I had to struggle with this, and that's why I did this uh, analysis, is for example, how much variance am I capturing, right? How much variance am I capturing with those two, you know, two major uh, components, the first two components, okay? So to answer that, I had to go again, right? Uh, you know, create two recent features, uh, create the, you know, the, the data set, replicate data set, uh, replicate, now it's PCA, you know, I name it PCA instead of PC, it's, it's, but it's extracting the, the principal component analysis without the augment uh, function, okay? So we get this and we got PCA, we got a matrix, okay? A matrix of the different, different information, but a matrix of the components of the principal, component, principal components, which are 48 because 48 features, it's going to throw you, you know, in uh, without any, you know, any arguments. It's going to throw. It's going to calculate all those, you know, components forty-eight, and then it's going to give you uh, the matrix, okay? The matrix of the variance, or the variance of each of those of those features within that principal component. Then we have to calculate the variance percentage, right? You know how much variance does the PC one, uh, you know, captures than PC two, PC three, and PC four, and the way to do it is uh, with this equation. 
okay, with the PCA object, okay, we are going to extract the standard uh, deviation, a square because it's a variance, and then divide it by the sum of those uh, variances. Okay, so let's do that. And now we get a vector, and the vector where it goes is that the first component uh, variance percentage is, let's say, uh, 0.24, okay, because it's in the you know scientific notation, but it's 0.2445. Four, four, then the second one is 0.2044 and all. So it gives you a gradient, right? So the, the first principal component captures the most variance, then the second one, the third one, and so forth, okay? So let's do this. Let's convert this into a data frame, you know, to uh, manipulate it a little bit better. Okay, we do this, and then we have our uh, data frame with the, the number of the component and then the variance. And what can we do with this? Well, what, what we can do is do like a, what is called a script plot. In other words, a script plot is a representation of each of the variance captured from each of the principal components, okay? And you can limit it. You can say, okay, give me the first 20, right? The first 20, we should capture, you know, most of the variance usually. So let's do that, okay? We're going to create a cumulative uh, percentage because we want to do both. We want to see what is the percentage of this principal component and then uh, add, add that variance to see, you know, how much variance any number of principal components captures, okay? So let's do this. Let's do the script plot, right? And this is the script plot only gives you, right? Uh, the maximum variance capture uh, of each principal component, as you, as you can see, the first two captures, you know, a good chunk, a good chunk of that variance, okay? And then the third, the fourth, and so forth. If we want to do the, you know, like a kind of, kind of a Pareto uh, chart, right? Uh, we can use a library called ggqc, uh, which give us a version of this script plot, but then it gives us the cumulative uh, variance. Okay, and now we can see more or less. Okay, that if you want to capture, let's say, if you want to capture seventy-five percent of the variance from the principal component analysis, you are going to be here, right? So if we go around here. That means that you need at least nine principal components to capture 75% of the variance. If you want to capture more, let's say uh, 80% or something, then you have to keep adding, right? Uh, the purpose of the game, of course, is try to capture the most variance with the least uh, principal components, okay? So you can reduce that, uh, that amount, okay? So any, any, any comments, uh, Mikael? <laughs> well, I this is the first time I know the GGQC uh, package. So okay, good. And yeah, I I do know that Hadley Wickham doesn't like a secondary access. So I mean, uh, right. two different y axis. But right. in this case, I think it's very helpful because it's mm -hmm. essentially pretty much the same thing, right? Correct. So. Yeah. So usually, two two axes with different you know ranges is is bad idea. Usually, yeah. It's not yeah. a pie chart, right? The pie charts usually you know they're not the best you know visualization, but in some cases it helps you. It helps you visualize different, especially when they are you know in a pie chart, for example, when there are two or three components, it's easily discernible, right? If you get 10, 20, I mean, ah, it gets a little bit out of hand. Uh, the same thing here. Okay, for the script plot. It's usually good to know, okay, this is the percentage of each principal components, but what is the cumulative? In other words, what, what is my cutoff? Okay, if I want to capture 80%, how many principal components do I need? Do I need half of them or do I need maybe 10 of them, you know, a quarter of them, et cetera? So it, it gives you that, uh, that discretionary option. Okay. Yeah, I really like it. I usually do it uh, sort of manually or just mm -hmm. use um, a a package to do this. So I think it's right. really um, useful addition for my uh, daily workflow. So thanks for that. Great, but great. yeah, for the, 
for the PCA, I um, completely agree. And I also, oh, well, one, one thing to add is that mm -hmm. it's such a pity that um, in the book, he showed that by using PCA, we can see that the um, a visit right. for holiday purposes are sort of forming right. their own cluster. Mm -hmm. But then he's not right. actually exploring the loadings of the principal component, which I think should be, you know, the highlight of doing all of this. You don't really, of course, it's nice to show, well, there mm -hmm. are few dots that cluster together. Correct. But then, of course, we would be very interested to see why are they um, clustering together, right? Exactly. And, and, and there's, a, yeah. there's a way also, you know, uh, because I didn't want to get too deep into this because it's just, you know, it's just a method, okay, of, you know, how to uh, interpret certain things that it comes from the data. But for example, there's a way to go into the PCA and see, like like you say, the lot of ways, right? A lot of ways of each of the features and see which are the features that contribute with, to that uh, principal component analysis. In fact, you know, Julia has a nice, uh, a nice video on that too. Okay, especially when you are working with uh, text, with text data. Okay, you know that you get, let's say you get comments from 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 a, from a product, and you want to analyze which are the words that go, you know, to the positive side or to the negative side, or they are neutral. Okay, so it helps in the classification because, as you can see, you know, in in a in a, in a comment review, let's say for six months. You're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of words around, you know, thrown around, and you want to put it in context, right? You know, you just have to have a word. You have to have, you know, an engrams and embeddings and all that good stuff. But yeah, she, she has a good, uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to to have it in your toolbox. Okay, if you need the PCA, then you know, try to understand, you know, what kind of information you can get from. It, okay, the other thing, you know, and this is a caveat. Remember, these are linear combinations, okay? If your features are not linearly related, in other words, they, are, they have a non-linear pattern, uh, the PCA is going to struggle to capture that, okay? So that's something that you should keep uh, in, in mind, okay? Because this works, you know, this works uh, pretty much on the linear algebra of linear regression, okay? You know, you are calculating, uh, you know, distances. Distances from, uh, numerical distance from each from each of the features, and it tries right. It tries to put a line, you know, uh, like, like the best line, you know, through through them. Uh, if if the linear if the linear re relationship is poor, maybe because there's not or there's a curve, right? You know, the, the, there's a non-linear re relationship. Then uh, your PCA is going to is it's not going to capture that. Okay, that's one of the caveats that you should be aware. Okay, so that's the that's the last part of the. <laughs> okay, uh, I think the other one uh, is it was about outliers, but I would like Kevin, you know, to pitch in in this one. Okay, because I know that he has he, part of his work is to detect uh, anomalies, outliers. So let's you know keep it in the you know in the oven for when Kevin comes and then, you know, we can have a more uh, uh, meaningful discussion uh, for this. But this is how, you know, this is a way to detect outliers, you know, within your time series, which is as, as, as not easy uh, as it sounds, okay? So, okay, let me see. So the other thing that I wanted to discuss, and, uh, Okay, is the is one of the exercises. It's the first one, and um, let me bring the. Okay, yeah, let me bring this. Uh, do, can, can you see it? Um, yeah, I can. You can. Okay. Uh, so the first exercise we took, you know, some thinking, and it's the way you know R is a great is a great uh, you know programming language for you know statistics for data analysis data visualization all that fine but to to create functions in r is not easy 
Okay, especially when you come from uh, general programming language like C or Python, for example. Uh, this one has its quirks and, you know, it's kind of a, a challenge. And that's why, you know, this one gave me a little bit of, uh, of headaches here. Okay, so the first exercise is write a function, <laughs> right on the bat, write a function to compute the mean and static deviation of a time series and apply it to the PBS data. The PBS data, as you will see, is the, uh, the medical prescriptions uh, in Australia. In Australia, they have a public uh, health system, you know, this is so unified, universal, and they have data from that, you know, because the government, apart from regulating the industry, also uh, provides the, is, is the main provider of the, of the uh, prescriptions. Okay, so uh, that, that's going to be our first, you know, uh, challenge for the day, right? So this was my approach. And if someone has a better approach, please bring it in. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the data, right? Okay, medical prescriptions. It has two time series. It really. has the, the prescriptions number, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, made or something, and then the cost of those prescriptions. So uh, write a function, right? Well, writing function is not that bad, right? Uh, you have your data, you know, when you start, uh, assembling your function, uh, you have a data frame, right? Which is which is going to be the the PBS, and then you're going to choose in this in this instance, uh, we're going to choose the scripts. I mean, the exercise doesn't say, it, okay, but you know, I assume that it was it was the scripts. For some reason, I didn't I didn't bother about about the cost, but you can do the same the same analysis for the cost. It's, it doesn't matter, but. You have to choose one of them, okay? So I chose a, a prescription scripts, and then uh, this function from features, right? From features uh, gives you a list of the different time series, and it calculates, uh, you know, different parameters. In this case, we want to uh, calculate the mean and the standard deviation, right? Okay. So this is the this is the function, right right here. Okay, so you have the function, function data, and then you have. So nothing, nothing pretty, pretty, uh, you know, disturbing there, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to compute both of them, right? We're going to compute both of them, and then we're going to extract, right? Uh, uh, the, you know, we're going to apply the function to the data frame PBS, and then we're going to extract. You know the, the the means and the standard deviation for all of this of this series, okay? Which is in this case there are 336, okay, uh, parameters. Okay, now comes the the tricky part. Okay, so we got our function. Now the second one is plot the series with the highest mean and the series with the lowest standard deviation. So there are really two problems here, okay? One is plot the one with the highest mean and then the other with the lowest standard deviation. So let's concentrate on the mean, the highest mean. So this is the, this is a, a, not a function, but you know, a pipeline to extract from this time series, uh, you know, uh, object, the data frame, to extract the, maximum uh, mean, the highest mean, okay? And then convert it to a character. Why do you want to convert it to a character? Because we have different, you know, different uh, means. So we have to extract that and then convert it to a character, okay? So what is max mean uh, squeeze vector, okay? Okay, this is the vector that gives you the information of the time series that has the highest mean. Okay, it gives you the uh, the concession, right? It gives you the type. It gives you the ATC one, which is one of the codes that they use for you know so dividing the type of frustration, and then the ATC two, which is a subcategory of ATC one, right? 
So in this, in this case, it is C1J and J1, and then you have the maximum, the maximum mean and your standard deviation, okay? So now that we have that vector, all we have to do is plot it, right? Okay, so this is coming, <laughs> here it comes the tricky part, right? You have to use this kind of notation to extract the elements of that vector, okay? So you have four, right? You have four elements plus, you know, the, the mean and all that, but uh, four, four elements that describe the time series. So you have to extract them. You have to plot it, the scripts, and then you have to label it. So let's see, I hope this works. Okay, because it, it was working last night. <laughs> okay, let me, okay, let me get this. Okay, so this is a time series, right? But now, what we want to do is create a function for that, okay? In other words, I want to create a function that plots, you know, the maximum time series for the PBS or something similar, okay? If you receive new data, for example, you can use that, that function to then, you know, recreate your, your, your analysis. So this is the function, right? Okay, this is the function, which is very similar to this one, very similar. Okay, this is the function, and then we apply it, right? Uh, we get the same result. So that's good. <laughs> we can replicate, and we have a function to, you know, uh, process that data frame in that format, whoop, and it gives you the, the highest, I mean. All right, so let's go to the lowest standard deviation. And that's the one that gave us a little bit of a challenge, okay? So we're going to do the same. We're going to get the, the time series, right? The, the vector of the time series that has the lowest, right? Okay, so let's inspect that one. And in that one, what happens is that instead of one time series, now we have two, okay? so. In order to be accurate in our analysis, we have to plot those two <laughs> time series. We cannot, okay, I'm going to plot one of them because, because that's the easy one. No, 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 we have to plot the two of them. Probably, maybe well, there were four, okay, that had the, the, the lowest standard deviation. We have to plot those four, okay, because that's information that somebody may, may need it. Okay, so without any you know, major details because this gave me a headache. <laughs> On trying to replicate the function, try to replicate the function that I did for the mean, okay? The problem is that the vector now has two, uh, you know, uh, two strings, okay? Two, uh, two, 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 two rows, two observations. So we, we have to make sure that we capture that. And the way that we capture is with this, okay? Which is very common. In, in programming language, right? You know, define an I, define a, a, a number, a, an indexer, and then, you know, apply it to it, okay? So we got our, our mean vector, then we got the, the data frame, and then this is the script uh, to extract that information. And one of the things that I had to struggle is that when I extracted here, because it was already a, a character, right? It was already a character, I didn't have to do anything, okay? It brings me a character and that's fine because that's what I'm filtering by the, you know, by, by that, by that uh, uh, situation. Uh, here, uh, it didn't work. You know, if you leave it like this, for example, the I, which is the, the, the row, right? The row indicator, and then the, you know, the different columns, and then you pluck it, uh, it won't work. The only way that works is if you change it, all of them as, as character, okay? And that was one of the, one of the major discoveries <laughs> that I did, you know, doing this. The rest is basically the, you know, is basically the same as the, the last script. So here we go. We got the function, right? And then because there are more than one element, we have to uh, iterate, right? Iterate. So this for loop, okay, we usually is, is not uh, common in R, you know, to do a for loop, or sometimes, you know, they, they are necessary. Sometimes you, could, you can do a apply, a supply. I try to do it that way. 
didn't work <laughs> for some reason. It, it didn't. It was a blah blah blah. Our line, you know, went crazy. Okay, so for that for loop, which is elegant and is very understandable. <laughs> okay, so we got our uh, two series, the one with the ATC one R and ATC two R uh, copayments co general, and then the one with the S, and we got our our two plots. Okay. So what, what do you think, Mikael? <laughs> it's not fun, you know, making functions in line is not fun, man. <laughs> Try to avoid it the best way you can. Not really, really. <laughs> yeah, best thing to do in the weekends. Right, right, right. I mean, I, I, I did it, I did it just, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, let's say uh, uh, eight, eight to nine o'clock, that it, uh, I kind of, you know, not dozing, but kind of, you know, still awake. And I said, let, let me see if I can, you know, do something. It took me a while, you know, it took me a couple of hours uh, to figure this out. But uh, it was a good exercise, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, how you deal with data frame objects in your functions, because that's the challenge, okay? Uh, in Python, it's, uh, it's, it's very seamless, okay? Uh, you know, for example, if you want to iterate with a column, and because columns are series in Python, you know, here is more like vectors, uh, you know, you can iterate easily, okay? You don't have to worry about changing the type or anything like that, unless, you know, you, you need that, then you do it previously and then you, you go back. But in R, it's a, it's a, it's a pain. <laughs> I think someone is going to be, you know, tr trying to figure this out, you know, and trying to make it a little bit easier. Uh, you know, especially because sometimes, the variables in the data frame, you have to give it a, a special treatment, right? You have to put it in quotes or something like that, you know, to make sure, you know, it understands this. And that's part of the part of the part of the challenge here. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's exercise number one. <laughs> no, I understand what you said is challenging. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This this one took, took me a while, you know, a, a lot of you know. A lot of uh, you know uh, searching and checking. Okay, you no, know, this is the, the okay. Ah, you need a character because you know you're filtering. So why this is not a character? Okay, you know it, it doesn't. For some reason, this only without the the pipe, it doesn't interpret as a character. It's, it's something else, <laughs> but it's not a character. So I say, okay, well let's pipe it. Okay, now now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some, you know, there's some way easier, you know, from what I did, but at least it works. <laughs> at least it works. Yeah. That's what, that's what's most important, all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so I guess that's it. <laughs> My, I, I did a, I did also exercise uh, four points, uh, the, the second exercise, okay? Uh, but that's basically, uh, I don't think it's that challenging because we already got the script from the author on the on the GG pairs, okay, the the GG ally. So it's just you know inserting some things and then uh, you know try to answer like that. So not that thing, but the first one it took a while. <laughs> yeah, the first time it took a while, especially you know trying to do some functional programming uh, with it because you can do the plot, okay. But sometimes you want to do a um, a little more nice, right? <laughs> okay. And the third exercise, the video for the liars, you know, I, I would like to wait also for, I haven't done it, but I would like to wait for Kevin uh, to see if, if he can give us uh, more, more insight on how, how he would do it. Okay. How we would do it, how we would attack it. So those are my two cents. <laughs> How is the weather in in the Netherlands? Uh, it's horrible. Really? Oh my god. Yeah, it's always horrible. Really? I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you, you don't have you don't have a condition, right? In your, in your uh, no, no, oh, wow. no. Fortunately, no. Yeah, Oof. I mean, yeah, it's um, horrible with the heat waves, especially last week. And actually, uh, well, my newborn was born. Um, Really on the peak of the heat the wave. Peak. The heat wave. Oh man. 
Wow. But it was it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I guess our family, my family back in Indonesia said that, well, how hot could it be? Because in Indonesia, it's very common, of course, to have okay. um, such a temperature. Right. But then back there, every room or, well, at least every house uh, would have an air conditioner, air conditioner which is totally yeah. not the case here. Right. So... Yeah, yeah you, uh, Europe has a challenge in that sense because you know uh, the climate is getting hotter. You know, there's no yeah. there's no way to, to deny it. You know, it's getting hotter. Maybe you can discuss you know why the why or the causes and all that, but it's getting hotter. And Europe, the infrastructure is not made for that. It's no, not, it's made for a for a temperate cool climate. So yeah, no. I mean, who would have thought? But apparently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they have a they have a lot to think about, <laughs> especially from yeah. from the infrastructure, you know, point of view. Because yeah. you know, if you do it planning for let's say for the next thirty years or the next forty years, then you can allocate resources and you can do it in a in a sustainable way. But right now, you know, there's no way. You know, you're going to suffer uh, one way or the other. There's going to be suffering. And there's going to be a lot of uh, adaptation to the you know. To, to the to the climate <laughs> who's that <laughs> it's my fun oh uh, yeah 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 well good way but he, he's grown up already <laughs> you told me that you hear only a few weeks <laughs> well that's my second the second yeah right right okay there you go there you go <laughs> so he has a little brother now good <laughs> yeah 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 okay yeah, that should be that's what that should be exciting. <laughs> really exciting, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, but yeah. exactly like what you said. I mean, um, yeah. Now that he's three years old, then we can have rest. Well, well now here comes the second. So. <laughs> Back again, man. Back again to the <laughs> to where he started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was, it, yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, after the second one, we said no. That, that's it. No, we cannot take it anymore. <laughs> you know? And, and no, then there comes the third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. So All right. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much for. Mm -hmm. the elaborate discussion on the PCA. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, people that see it, you know, it will be helpful. And especially, you know, try to watch the, the Julia. It, it's, it's very insightful, okay? Because she does a couple of examples of how you can use PCA, you know, to get some insights, right? Because that's yeah. what you want to do, get some insights, get some uh, pattern recognition and all that. And, uh, and, and she says, as you know, Sometimes, you know, when you are confronted with PCA and you get all this linear algebra and all this jargon, uh, he says, well, why, you know, <laughs> why are you complicating this? And she struggled with that. You know, she struggled with that. And then, you know, eventually she came to understand, okay, I'm going to use PCA, but this for this purpose, okay? You know, uh, reducing uh, dimensionality, getting some insights from the features that contributes to the variance. Okay, now we're talking, <laughs> okay? Yeah, because, you know, uh, there's a function to do PCA. You know, you don't have to recreate what other people uh, do. What the, the value is how you're going to use that. You know, how are you going to use that, that tool? Okay, and sometimes, you know, it, it, it won't work. I, I mean, I, I had a, a real case. We had 62, uh, it was a, the final data set was 62 uh, features. And um, the PCA didn't work. I mean, uh, the variance explained was really low. Uh, the first one was like about 9%, second one was 7%, I mean, no. Nah. And probably what happened was that there was, there was no linearity between, you know, some of the features that, that PCA couldn't capture. So, hey, you know, uh, at least you can recognize, okay, this one works, so let's try other ones. So we try some more cluster analysis, you know, with the, with the medians, et cetera. And then we started to get, you know, more, uh, more insight. You know, uh, more meaningful uh, insight. But PCA, you know, they don't, they don't work out. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> you know, 
it's not a you know it's not a magic wand you know <laughs> yeah definitely not but yeah, it's yeah. like um I guess it's the first algorithm that I would use, especially if I have a new data. It's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and I, mean, I mean, if PCA doesn't help, then you know it's going to be difficult. Exactly, exactly. So at least you know you know. Okay, these are the limitations. I'm going to use it, but then you know if something comes that is not what I expect, then I have to you know reassess uh, you know our strategy. The, the same thing about, uh, for example, in that same uh, project that, that, that we did, uh, one of the methods, uh, the algorithms, uh, modern algorithms that did pretty good, it was not the top, but it was pretty good. It was ordinal regression, okay? In our case, because there were, this was a multi-class uh, mm -hmm. uh, problem, and ordinal regression really did pretty good, better, better than SGBoost. Okay, better than SGBoost. Okay, and the, the top two were uh, light GBM and, uh, and support vector machines. Those were the two more. But ordinary regression was right there, okay, uh, with them. So if you want a simpler model, hey, ordinary regression will be the, the, the one, you know. Don't, don't fuss with the, with the other, uh, you know, black box, boxes. <laughs> yeah, it happens, it happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially if your label ha has a natural order, it's yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that that's why you know that there was a classification rating, and you know there was an ordinal, you know, an ordinal uh, variable. Uh, but the the way that the ordinal regression you know work suited that particular problem, even though uh, there was a lot of nonlinearity and all kind of you know uh, crazy crazy stuff, but still. It was giving a good, a, a, a good, good model, a good prediction. <laughs> Who know? <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing that I like about the um, this PC example is at least um, the fact that the author shows that if we generate features from the data, then we can mm -hmm. actually use that for the um, for input for dimensionality reduction. I mean, I have. Um, in my daily work, I don't really do that because what I do is just normalize the data either by scaling or right. um, dividing by the maximum value and that's it. But okay. I think it's, it's a nice approach to um, maybe um, like take um, the square root or even uh, the cube root or whatever. Correct. And then also put it as an input. I think it would be nice. And also interaction. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, it definitely gives me some inspiration. Oh, sure. But not that I'm uh, going to work on my parental leave. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You still are in parental leave? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So, good, good time to, you know, to think and to, you know, do some things that maybe, you know, you didn't have time. You know. <laughs> yeah, recharge yeah, about it. Yeah, during the midnight sittings. Right. To do, how, how, many, to how many weeks do you get a parental parental leave? Um, well, I well at least now I can get up to a month. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But but for, for both parents or for you in oh, particular? Uh, for me in particular. For you. For you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, because for example, in Puerto Rico, uh, the law provides for parental leave, but it's for the mama. For the mom, okay. For the father, <laughs> you, have to, you have to keep working. You have to keep working. You know, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. Yeah, uh, yeah but they are, and uh, they had. I don't need to expand it, but they had a uh, two two months for parental leave oh. with half, at least half, uh, the salary. Okay. okay? Yeah, something cool. that you usually don't see in the U.S. <laughs> unfortunately, no. It depends on the company. If it's a company policy or not. But there, yeah, you get to leave. But but the parents, uh, the, the the male parent or the other parent partner doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. It's very particular. Yeah. <laughs> well, it must be really tough for the family if only one of um, the parent can get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah so sometimes what, what they do is that they take they take take from vacation. You know, like a week or something to you know make sure uh, that everything's okay. But yeah. Yeah, it's that, not that's really the alternative. Vacation. It's not really a vacation. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's not. Yeah, but 
you know, that, that's the only option. Or, or, yeah. or, or say that, that you're sick, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit weird, right? That you're sick while, you know, <laughs> well, what, what, you know, yeah, precisely because, you know, your, <laughs> your, uh, your partner, you know, uh, they gave birth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. That's how it is. Okay. So, yeah. Um, okay. I guess. So, that's a wrap. Get... so let's see uh, next week, uh, Kevin. And if we have time, uh, we'll, we can check the outlines. Yeah. That, that's oh, excellent. by the way, um, I will also put it on the Slack. But um, so, because I have signed up for chapter six, okay. I see that it's actually full of. Um, you know, it's sort of like a strategy for executives. Okay. So it's so the chapter title is on judgment before trust. So it's, oh, okay, judgmental focus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, um, what, how to forecast when we don't have um any sort of, uh, prior information or prior experience. Right. And I mean, of course, I can present it, but it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's very sort of technical and sort of boring. Right. And I I would suggest to actually jump to the seventh chapter, chapter seven. already. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's no written uh, law that we have to discuss every chapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can say, okay, you know, uh, you know, you can read it, you know, on your own, you know, this is more informative, whatever. Uh, we could we could move forward. Oh yeah, yeah. easily. <laughs> we make our own rules, man. Here, <laughs> we make our own rules. Yeah, yeah. If we want to spend more time, for example, chapter eight. I started working in chapter eight, and chapter eight is going to take a while. Okay. Oh There's yeah. A lot of information there. A lot of information. So probably even two sessions. I don't know if we're going to have time. You know, I mean to explain it. You know, well. Okay. I mean, you, you can do it in one hour, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden, but, you know, it's, it's not meaningful. So if we want to take some time there in chapter eight, probably we'll have to, we'll have to. Okay, so maybe right. we can, then, you know, uh, you know, invest the time in the things yeah. that really matter. Sure. Okay, yeah. All I, right. You have my vote. <laughs> you have my vote. <laughs> all right, that's easy. Yeah, that okay. was easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is easy, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's when the errors come that, you know, it gets complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a book club. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. This is, you know, all right. This is, this is not, you know, uh, glass and, you know, <laughs> suffering. <you> know? <laughs> all right, Michael. All uh, right. Michael, so, Michael, so uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll leave you to the parenthood, you know, to the parenthood. Uh, project okay all right so that, that, okay that, thank you that, that best wishes okay best wishes thank you so much <laughs> and see you next week ricardo yeah you Bye. too <laughs>